Hello there. My name is Caroline Garvin and I work for the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine in the Veterinary Medicines and Antimicrobial Resistance section. I'm here today to give you a quick update on the new veterinary medicines legislation and to outline for you the changes that are now required both for vets and for yourselves as farmers, particularly in relation to dry cow therapy. The first thing to say is these are veterinary medicines legislation, but their key goal is to protect human health, particularly in relation to addressing what we call AMR or antimicrobial resistance, which we really mean is antibiotic resistance. So the key goal of this legislation is to protect human health and also animal health because we rely on antibiotics to treat disease in both humans and animals. The key changes in this legislation put really strict controls on both vets who prescribe and also on yourselves as farmers who use these antibiotics. So there are new changes now required in our approach to dry cow therapy. So as you move into the drying off period, your vet now has to consider new legal requirements before he or she considers prescribing dry cow tubes. The first new legal requirement is that all vets must justify their prescribing. This means they must be able to demonstrate if they were inspected by the Department of Agriculture why there was a need to prescribe dry cow tubes. The other thing that vets have to do is either carry out a clinical examination of the cows or a proper assessment at the time they prescribe. This is not requiring vets to examine every animal, but a proper assessment means looking at records and having an up-to-date knowledge of farm management practices mastitis issues, disease issues on the farm. This gives the vet sufficient knowledge so that they know whether you need a dry cow tube or whether a teeth sealant is sufficient. The other thing that vets have to consider is that there is no longer a, an acceptance, if you like, of routine use of antibiotics. So we could say that Dry cow therapy in the past was considered blanket use, which meant all cows were routinely treated. This is no longer acceptable in this legislation because routine use in some cases would be unnecessary use. So a vet cannot prescribe on a routine basis if there's poor hygiene or poor farm management practices going on. So this significantly restrains a vet in terms of how they can prescribe these tubes. The other thing to remember is vets can only prescribe the quantity needed to treat the animals with the mastitis at the time and any prescription you get must be dispensed or filled within five days. So what I'm saying is that vets can no longer prescribe as they did in the past. The legislation no longer allows that. So what has this new legislation changed from a farmer perspective? This legislation is saying very clearly that blanket dry cow therapy is no longer permitted. What all farmers have to move to now, and some already have, is selective dry cow therapy. What this means is that instead of looking at the herd, you must look at every cow individually and at that stage, your vet will decide whether she needs a dry cow tube or not. So we're moving away from this whole herd treatment to individual cows. And the selection process means that your vet will require records, records of previous mastitis cases, records of what caused the mastitis, records of treatment of mastitis and the outcomes, but key to this would be milk recording because milk recording gives you that cow information that allows a vet to decide, does she need a tube or not? Milk recording also gives lists of problem cows, new infection rates, and also target rates for cure. So milk recording is key. And all that information is needed for your vet to determine whether you need a dry cow tube or not. 
your vet will also need to have an understanding of what management practices you have on farm, particularly around hygiene. Because hygiene, hygiene, hygiene is the most important thing when you are treating mastitis or in particular when you are drying cows off. Even using mastitis tubes does not guarantee you won't get mastitis if the tubes aren't put in in a hygienic way. So farm records and data are key. This is all about having as much information. So your SCC, any bacterial culture and susceptibility results, all these pieces of information are key tools for your vet to work with you and determine whether you need dry cow tubes or not for this dry season. Drying off cows can be challenging and requires time and patience. And there's always a concern of what is going on over the dry period. But this new legislation is saying we must move to selective dry cow therapy. We must work to optimize animal health to reduce the need for antibiotics, particularly at drying off. We now need to look at antibiotics differently, both the vets that prescribe and you as farmers. Farmers have a key role to play in the responsible use of antibiotics. But optimizing animal health, reducing SCC, reducing cases of mastitis, will also increase milk yield, farm profitability, and ensure a sustainable dairy sector into the future. Thanks for listening.